Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Addiction and the Three Principles. Uh, today we're going to uh, tackle a much avoided topic, which is relapse. And uh, the, there's really, uh, there's really a, a deep spiritual meaning behind relapse in, in my experience with myself and others. And uh, part of that really is that it, we're only ever trying to feel better than how we feel. And if you didn't know you could feel better, you wouldn't be trying to feel better. So the first thing I'd like to say about, about relapse is that it really doesn't mean anything. It's just a part of the human experience. It's just part of that desire to reach that part of ourselves that you know, we feel good. We feel okay. You know, so there, there's really no, uh, no blame to it or shame or, or any of that stuff. It just, if it happens, just move on. It's giving the energy to that, that relapse that tends to cause more because then you have guilt and shame and remorse and, and all that stuff piled on top of those already not so good feelings. And if what we're trying to do is feel better than making yourself feel guilty, isn't going to help at all. You know, so it's, it's really, if it happens, move on. There's no need to dwell on it. What do you think, Harry? Okay. Um, let's, um, the first thing that, that came to my mind when I heard this topic was, um, oh, I lost the thought. Um, was that we have to come to a state of understanding that we don't understand. Like the reason we're having relapse is because we don't understand something. And if you could see that, you would then really enjoy your relapse because it would, what would happen is it would then become like a university course because we're given consciousness and consciousness makes us aware of our situation. The only thing that stops consciousness from being effective is when, we're, when we actually uh, don't use it. And the way we don't use it is by lying to ourselves. that we know the answer, that we, we're on top of it. And, and you notice with relapse, it's always like a struggle. And that struggle is the problem. Your relapse is just an effect of the struggle you're having with yourself. And the struggle you're having with yourself is, is, your, is your image of yourself of knowing the answer is conflicting with the fact that you don't. Now, Sid said very clearly, and I said this once before, is that the only reason, if you're stupid enough to go down, and that's just, just a word, by the way, don't, please, I'm not then you go down and you go down and you experience what you need to know. And what Greg is talking about is if you take it easy on yourself, gentle on yourself, what happens is you see the pot of gold at the end of the, the down and, it, and it's so valuable that it's worth the relapse. If you bring consciousness with you, if you just bring guilt and thoughts and all that stuff with you, all it does is dig a deeper hole for yourself because as Greg mentioned, you, get, you feel so darn guilty. And, and he used the word with me the other day that I hated. I loved the word in terms of context, but hated the word shameful. You know, ooh, shameful. I, I don't mind feeling guilty, but shameful, yuck. You know, I don't like that one. So, hi, Mark. So, so, so we're, so we're, so we're, we're looking for, to find, clarity in our mind and only an insight will do it the only reason you have relapse is you don't understand the three principles deep enough it's just that simple and we we all are in that boat we all want to do it now sit i want to do a quote that sid said i read it in an interview and i just loved it he's never written this but i just loved it and the quote the quote is what we're look what we're not looking for is, is to discover or analyze, figure out what our baggage is, and then let it go. 
That's what we're not trying to do. And that's what relapse is. You're trying to figure out what your baggage is. You're holding on to it. It's like a cross on your back type of thing. The answer, the, what you're looking for is an understanding of what the baggage is. And what the baggage is, now listen to this, is, is, oh, is thought carried through time is the bag is the understanding of the baggage that is and what the baggage is is a thought carried through time and so you you're what's happening is is we're carrying this we're carrying this baggage and we're not understanding it we're not understanding what it is and this relapse that we experience then comes with a tremendous amount of circumstance and evidence and support all ego based and all geared to, to make you feel unspiritual to make you feel that you're a victim of your thoughts and th that's the reality that we live in we're all doing it anyway so as greg says you might as well take it a little easier so the so that's that's what we're looking for and the way I experience it in the three principles is you have to be in the now. You live in the now. And then when you live in the now and capture that feeling, then the only other piece of the puzzle is don't rethink, don't get thinking into that stuff again. And then you're free. But I, but I, get, I get asked the question quite often, how do I live in the now? And the only answer is you're always living in the now. It's only your thinking that takes you away from that. And I, I love in, in Joe Bailey's book, The Serenity Principle, he says, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, uh, serenity is our natural state of being when we stop doing the things that take us away from it. That's why I tell people, be gentle on yourself. Don't beat yourself up over something that happened. You know, and I, I look at it this way. When I was younger, I, you know, my earliest memories, I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. Like I didn't have the manual to life. Everybody else seemed to know what they were doing and, and how to do it. And I was the only one who didn't know. You know, that's what it appeared like to me. And it, those feelings eventually led me to, you know, my, my first issue was overeating, especially eating a bunch of junk food. You know, my, my mom's a great cook and she baked a lot of, a lot of good treats and I definitely overdid it, you know, and, and, that kind of stopped working after a while because it never really worked in the first place. Um, it was really only my thinking about it that made it work. And then I, you know, then I found alcohol at the age of 12 and it helped me escape those feelings for a little while. <clears throat> and after escaping those feelings so many times over and over again through the years, it, it created a habitual thought pattern. That's what addiction is. It's a thought pattern. Plain and simple. When you change the thought pattern, you change addiction. It no longer exists. Because it's our own creation. It's, it was my way of escaping those feelings of not belonging. And when I had my big experience back in 2012, I saw the oneness of everything. And, and I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to feel like you don't belong when you realize that everything's really the same anyway. There is no separation. It's all that same source energy. It's all, you know, if you want to call it God or, or whatever you want to call it, it's all that same source energy just manifesting in different forms. But what we're talking about here is what's there before the form. We're talking about that spiritual side, and that is always there. And it's never damaged. It's never broken. It's never addicted. It's never, there's never anything wrong with it. It's always pure. It's just our, our thoughts, which is more in the, in the world of form, that make it look otherwise. And society definitely helps with that. You know, society is really good at pointing at the form and saying that's what the problem is. You've got to change your circumstances. Well, uh, my circumstances really haven't gotten any better over the last couple of years but yet I'm happier than I've ever been. You know, and it, it's such a beautiful thing. My circumstances don't have to determine how I feel right now. 
because right now there's really nothing wrong. Well, maybe now we, we could ask the audience, Kim, how would you explain it? Like you're working with, with, a, with a, I guess what you would call a, a, a crowd that really experiences a lot of this. How, how would you, in your own words, explain what Greg was just talking about? You can unmute. Your, can you unmute her? Okay. Greg? <laughs> um. Well, my, my experience, but before I came across the principles and worked with someone else, I was earning really good money. Um, you know, um, I've kind of lived a life when I've had no money. I was a single mom, lived in a very deprived area. I lived on very, very limited income. Now I live on a very limited income. I haven't earned any money in five months. But <laughs> that, is, that doesn't make whether or not I'm happy or not happy. Because I can only ever experience one my thought in the moment. So, you know, you know, if you tell me a joke, I might laugh if I think it's funny. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you're constantly feeling your thinking in the moment, whether or not you're aware of it. So um, it isn't about what's on the outside, though it does appear. And I did get caught up for a little while because I was going for funding. I we kept getting knockbacks, and I was just like, I was really skinned. And I was just, I'd got a credit card and I'd been a bit, you know, I went to the line and took me mum, but I was like, that's all right. <laughs> but I got caught up for a little while with it. And then I started to notice that I was really thinking about money a lot more than I usually would have before, you know, even when I was really, really, really skinned before. You know, I, I, I didn't think about it. I just got on with it. And I kind of started to observe that thought rather than, sort of being in it and I was just seeing more and more and clearly that I've actually always been in service. I've always kind of worked in the community and I get a feel good feeling just by showing up and having a conversation with somebody and seeing someone smile, seeing someone's face light up, you know, because that is a win win. I get lit up, they get lit up kind of thing. So I'm aware that it isn't our circumstances that <clears throat> decide whether or not we're happy because it really can only ever be a moment to moment experience can't it it can't be anything else because there are, are you are you finding kim that when you're sharing the the, the feelings just kind of take care of themselves completely <clears throat> in in any kind of work i've kind of done i trained as a counselor and I, I kind of remember, because um, I was like a, from a very deprived background, very low educated, so I didn't get no exams at school. And to go into counselling, I made up my qualifications so I could go and study. <laughs> then when I got in there, I was kind of like, this stuff don't make sense. But I knew it wasn't making sense to me in a way that there was a lot of way, there was a lot of boxes and a lot of things that people had to do or they were seen as broken and damaged. And I kind of thought, I, I know this isn't true. I knew that wasn't true. And what I kind of realized is the reason I went into training as a counselor because I really love people and I see what's inside a person, even if they can't see what's inside them, because I know that's in me. So I would kind of just show up with a lot of love in my heart and then wisdom just would come through. And I, if I know that's in me, I know that's in other people. You know, when we hear something wise, we kind of feel it with our, our it's like the souls have got ears. Do you know what I mean? And that's what's listening. It's not like our... Our, our personal minds, our intellect, our identity, or this built up idea of who we think we are. There's something much deeper going on with it. And I kind of think that I've trusted that for, since being a very uh, young child. You I, have, I learned to you have, that. By the way, you have you know, really personified that in spades type of thing. Greg, one of the things that, that I've <laughs> noticed with relapse is, is people seem to be very afraid of uh, uh, idle time, like they try to keep really busy in their, if they're in addiction and so on. Could you, I don't, could you address that a little bit? You know what I mean yeah, by that? I mean, I, yeah, that's really, uh, it's kind of a natural place to go to when you're used to changing your circumstances because that's all that really is. You're keeping yourself distracted by changing your circumstances, keeping busy. And it can work for a short period of time, but eventually you'll end up alone. You'll end up in a quiet room and you'll have to face yourself. <clears throat> and that's actually a very good thing if, if you have 
any kind of understanding of, of where your experience really comes from, being alone can be one of the nicest things in the world. And, you know, like I, I, I'll never forget the first time, you know, not, not really all that long ago when I actually looked at myself in the mirror and just said, I love you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. seriously, I, I that looked right in my own eyes. And I could see that would be tough. Yeah. 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 I had never done that before. Yeah. Oh, I can see why. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I tried, you know, positive <laughs> affirmations. I tried that stuff in the past with, you know, the positive affirmations and stuff and saying, I love you. Oh, yeah, that but, really works well, doesn't it? That's like but it, I never, it, it never really meant anything and I wouldn't look myself in the eyes and it was just, you know, it was just saying something to say something. But, you know, when, when you open yourself up to the wisdom, and allow those insights to just sink in and not try to figure them out. It I, just I changes that, everything. Yeah, it does. But but what? But people try to avoid that quiet time in their understanding. Like they're they're afraid they're going to relapse. Obviously, relapse is the biggest thing on people's minds if they're in, in addiction. And 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 they they they're running they're trying to avoid exactly what you're describing as the solution to the problem or <laughs> or an answer the, where the answer lies not the solution but an answer so, so how do they, like how, what is what is it that they're missing that that makes them because they're running away from the answer if you know what I mean <clears throat> well it's it's the unknown. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there's always, I don't want to say always, there was, for me anyway, always that fear of the unknown until I realized that every moment is unknown anyway. So I might as well embrace the unknown. I mean, I mean, seriously, five minutes ago, did you know that this is exactly what we were going to be talking about? No. Every moment of life is unknown. And it's only our thinking about the past and future that takes us away from enjoying that present moment. Oh, and I that's what it. the problem is. I'm, you know, oh, no, I'm, I'm alone in a quiet room. Oh, no, I'm going to relapse. Why? Why would you relapse? Why would you be more likely to relapse in a quiet room than you would in a noisy room with a whole bunch of people that you really don't want to be around? Because you got your thoughts, Greg. <clears throat> right. There isn't that distraction there. So now you're sitting there with your own thinking. And when you think about your thinking, <laughs> that just that just compounds it and makes it even worse. In in the native mm. world, Greg, wisdom is defined as being able to be, help being alone with yourself. And you could see there's a, there's a lot of validity in that that we have to we have to enjoy, like our thoughts and we have to be able to have a beautiful feeling without outside stimuli. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's one of the things that's, that's helped me anyway, Greg, what you talked about. Well, and a, one of my favorite things to do now is actually go to some of the most remote areas of the, uh, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I follow animal trails now. I don't even stay on the, the Mark People trails. I follow animal trails because animals know where the natural beauty is. Yeah. And I found some of the most amazing places. I mean, hidden hidden ponds and, and meadows and stuff that aren't part of the, the trail system that are just some of the most gorgeous places I've ever seen. And it's it's far, you know, I go to places that are far enough away from roads and, and houses and stuff. I don't hear anything except for just nature. And it, it's so such powerful. a beautiful place to be to just, and especially having that quiet mind along with the quiet surroundings it's it's unmatched that experience is just unmatched by anything else just to be able to be in that moment and not have to even think oh what a beautiful flower but just to look at the flower and just realize that i'm actually one with the flower too we're all made out of the same energy we come from it we go back to it and nothing is good or bad. It just is. That's the I am, you know. <laughs> it just is. 
You know what you're talking about, Greg? Mark and I, uh, I, Mark's joined me into a little recovery center program that we're doing together. And one of the things that I dislike about the recovery center, and, and Mark is very much similar to you, he loves the outdoors, is that they don't get out very much from their setting that they have. They don't have that privilege that you have to, be, to walk into nature and how helpful. Do you agree with that, Mark? Do you notice that? Can you unmute him? Yep, he's unmuted. Hang on. You're I'm unmuted. To, okay. This, thanks. Yeah. No, they're all. Um, they've all kept themselves confined on that floor, haven't they? And it's kind of like a safety thing, and they won't go out. They they can't go out into the warmth of the day. They've um, they're keeping themselves safe. That's their attitude on that floor, isn't it? And uh, it's too bad they can't. Uh, you know, it, it can't be an open, you know, a park or something that they can get out to. But they're right down in the uh, the down and dirty part of the town there. And uh, wouldn't it be fantastic, Mark, if we had our group in, in the middle of the forest or something like that? Exactly. Just like with Reagan, that would be so helpful for uh, for us as well as them. You yeah. know, lighten it up a little bit. You know, and get mm -hmm. into it. Greg is pointing <clears throat> the beauty of nature that we all love so much and need, yeah. you know, type of thing. And I think what Greg's pointing to, Mark, is, is kind of valuable in, in, in the sense that if you are repeating your same life pattern on the outside, it's unlikely that you're going to get added uh, bonus push from spirit. Um, if you're you're d repeating that one of the things we have as a privilege is i can jump on my bike and go to the ocean or as greg says he follows the animal trails and as he's one i one of the feelings i pick up from you greg is it's growing it's a growing feeling it's not oh, just yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's what i i mean i'm glad you're enjoying yourself but i the feeling i get is it it's it's starting to infiltrate you're inside and bringing out an, another aspect of who Greg is. Uh, well, it's, it's becoming the new habitual thought pattern. Oh, I, I, <laughs> it, I mean, really, it, it is. It's, it's becoming automatic. Okay, use that word better. I like that one better. <laughs> well, it's it's all thought anyway. Oh, we got a question here, Greg. We got Chrissy. Oh, oh is that me? Okay. Oh, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, well, I, I, when, while you were speaking, I was just thinking that I, I, in some way, I respect the the whole addiction thing is about not feeling connected or being feeling cut off. So, 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 uh, when you feel connected to the world, to the bees and the birds and the you know other people, uh, uh, there's there's no pain. Yeah, it's okay, and so. Right. So, so, so being in that room or whatever it was she was talking about, could you just being a way of, in a way, you're a little bit afraid of you, you that, you, that you know, you, and one part of you wants the connection, the other part is afraid, whatever. So, you, you it, so it's it's interesting how nature nature works, uh, that we get quiet and uh, as Greg, when you're walking these trails, it, I, I I know that feeling that ah, oh, you know. Or the feeling that you 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 almost disappear in this beauty. Like and, when you took me to the sacred mountain in in uh, yeah, near yeah. Aarhus. I mean, I you I, you said let's go. I says there's no way I want to go right now. It's just too beautiful. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it it's, was. It's this feeling that there's something that you're part of something bigger. That he that's healing. Yeah. Yeah. And Harry. Uh, you know, uh, talking to these people in the ward there, in the um, ward, <laughs> or the safe, the safe floor, um, you know, we did touch on the fact that uh, it's actually a very, a very rich area, you know, of town. There's a there's a richness about living close to the street and about all the characters and the people, and, and there there is a place for these people to go. If they go inside and and find this clarity of mind, it's not necessary to be out necessarily to be out in nature. I mean, it would be nice for them to have that quiet. But we're talking about quietness of mind and compassion and realizing something, you know, about 
thought having gone south on them and you know forgiving themselves and not judging themselves and and uh, and getting on you know and, and seeing seeing the beauty of life no matter where it is so uh, you know even down in the down and dirty there so there is a place but you know and i was tending to talk to them about if they see this you know maybe they should move away from that that uh, that area because they may just mix mix in with the same people and be tempted and so forth but then i was thinking afterwards that you know that it, it's not about that. It's not about moving away or living out, out. It just says we wouldn't move out to the, to the, back to the land, you know, to, for an answer. Uh, the answer is the realization first, then they'll know what to do. Mm. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. That's, I wasn't trying to say that me going out in nature is yeah. the reason I was able to be quiet. It was the point that I could be in a place without the distractions and be okay. You know, because we were talking about not being able to, you know, sit in a quiet room alone or something like that, trying to stay distracted and always have something going on. But it, it's it's important. It's actually more important to be able to be okay when there's nothing going on. That's much more vital than than learning how to keep yourself busy. You know. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Beautiful. That was great. We've been giving away the books, and they all just love them, you know, and they, they highlight them, and they're really finding a lot from that. Kim has a question here, Greg. She raised her finger anyway. <laughs> I did, I did. I didn't know if I was on or uh, speaking. Is it, can you hear me? <laughs> yep, you're good. <clears throat> well, I don't think it's about... Um, you know, I do, I do get what you're saying about nature and stuff. I, I write to a guy that's in prison. He's one of Jacqueline Hollow's guys. <clears throat> and um, and it, it just in the conversations that we have via letter to, to, you know, that he's completely gone inside. It's really beautiful because it, it's so not those circumstances. It just is when you see that within and that touches and you just burst open and just see everything different, even in a, in a place like prison, you know? Um, yeah. For me, it's just kind of, it just is showing over and over and over again. It is not the circumstances. So I, I get that. Yeah. People may be a bit afraid to maybe go out and, or, you know, venture out of the ward or whatever. I'm sure that will happen sooner or later, but yeah, from, my experience is just just even from these letters with you know from this guy it's just wow it really isn't about the outside circumstances it's just totally when they go inside that's it bosh open <laughs> beautiful well tanya you look just too comfortable over there i mean that just looks a little what do you think you're on the beach or something like that come on here let, let's right. say you've got something to say about this come on I'm I'm totally relaxed just listening. Um, no, I'm I don't really have much to say, uh, except that the, the term relapse kind of can have a mm, it, the word itself. Just I mean, I think of uh, relapse in the sense that I've just lost my way again. You know, that term just doesn't really sit well sometimes. But you have to have a way of labeling it, I guess. Um, and to me, it's just I've lost my way. Um, and I, you know, I believe the illusions, delusions that this will, this external thing will help me feel better and it will take away all that uncomfortable feelings. And it really does in the moment. It's just the after effects and then the behaviors and then that cycle of awful darkness, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's it. You know, you're right. If you drop the thought after you've done it, it's over. It's absolute, that's 100% correct. It's only us in our bad habit, to use Greg's word, habitual thought, that uh, we, we, we think we have to linger in it. And the quicker we drop the thought, the quicker the, the experience disappears from our consciousness. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's actually a quick fix. You know, drop the thought, no experience. Carry the thought, lots of experience. It's, that's a, obviously a, a great teaching tool. I mean, I love the learning like that. 
because I need, if I can't understand it, I would like to understand it. You know, that's simple. I don't, I don't mind being a bit of a this or a that. I kind of enjoy it because it just shows me, oh, you know, here you are, Mr. Big Shot, and it turns out you're, you're Mr. Little Shot, and uh, that's, that's okay. That's okay. I love it. And, uh, and then, of course, once that feeling comes pouring back into you, you're home. And once you're home, as Mark says, that's where the answer lies. Yeah. Beautiful, Mark, by the way. Very beautiful. Uh, Deanna, you haven't said anything. We're trying to get a little interaction here. And you've got a big smile on your face. So come on, let's let it out. I don't know. I, I'm, I've not really had experience of a relapse. I had a little one right after I got home. Um, but I didn't beat myself up about it too much. And so I was curious to see what, what today would be like as far as a conversation but it sounds to me like we've sort of moved past it which is sort of how i feel about it honestly sorry i missed that word what did you say it's what's that <clears throat> what did she say of, we've moved past it oh move past it yeah oh beautiful that's it we move past it uh, not to say it can't happen but it it just seems like um I don't know. I know people that, that have, and, and they, the ones I know, thank goodness, have turned around and addressed it um, appropriately, I think. They haven't really slammed themselves about it. They've just gotten over it. So I think that's what probably one of the keys is. If you do do it, it's, it's uh, I think what Tanya said, you've sort of lost your way and you can get right back on track. Greg said the same thing in his own way. I'd also like to make another distinction in, in, in my opinion, my view on it. That, like for instance, somebody who maybe had a drinking problem and after, you know, after they, they find this understanding and, and find that, that peace of mind and that serenity, and they go have, you know, a drink with dinner, I don't consider that a relapse. The relapse to me is using something outside of you to escape. There's a key difference there. You know, if I want to go have a glass of wine with my dinner, that's not a relapse. That's just having a glass of wine with dinner. Now, if I decide that, you know, I'm going to have a bottle or two with dinner, <laughs> <laughs> that's a little so, different <laughs> to get the night kicked off so that i you know so that i can escape my thinking for the night that's a totally different thing mm, i love that mm. i agree actually greg it's funny you, you mentioned that because I, I was in new york a few weeks ago with a girl the girls trip we had a weekend and we went to an italian restaurant prior to the show we were going to. And as we finished dinner, they brought small little shot glasses of limoncello to the table to clear our palate, supposedly. And so I thought, well, oh, what do I do? You know, and, and then I said, well, yeah, I'll take a sip. And I did. And one of the other girls had already walked outside. <clears throat> and in the old days, I would have picked up hers and chugged it too. <laughs> but no. You know, I had my palate cleanser and I walked out. And, and so I don't consider that a relapse at all either. But um, you, it's funny how it, it sort of stops you in your tracks when you think about something like that. And then it's okay. Very important point you two guys brought up. Very, very important. I love it. That's a, that, that's a huge misconception in the world. That's why it's such a good point. You know, it's, uh, we're trying to clear up misconceptions in this room. And then here's one of them, the two of you just bullseyed it. That, that's a misconcept. And uh, with the three principles, obviously, having a drink is not the end of the world. And uh, yeah, or a part of a drink, you know, which in my case is about all I can handle. You know, so it's interesting, isn't it? When I was young, going to university, I drank a ton. 
a ton. I was a big, big drinker. It was party time, eh? It was the, I didn't want to drink. I didn't need to drink, but everybody else was drinking. And if you wanted to participate in the party, that was what you did. So the more you drank, the more you proved to everybody what a big drinker you are. And it became sort of a uh, crown on your head. I'm a, I can drink a lot. And then I barfed on, on the outside of the car. That's even better. That makes a better story on Monday morning. Fantastic story, you know, type of thing and, and, and stuff. But one of the weirdest things that happened to me, and so even on Salt Spring, I would, uh, you know, when I arrived on Salt Spring, I was still drinking a fair amount. And, and, and as my level of consciousness rose, I, it, the, I loved the taste of beer. I'll tell you that. I really think it's a delicious drink. But I can't drink more than a quarter to a half a glass of it. And I just, all of a sudden, I just, I just can't even take another sip. And it's, I didn't do that consciously, guys. You know, I didn't make an effort to stop. But I can tell you that, that I, I, I still enjoy, especially if it's a hot, hot, hot day, to have a, a glass, a part of a glass of a beer. But it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't really uh, do it for me. And my body and my level of consciousness just has pushed it aside. And, you know, when I hear what the two of you are talking about, obviously the same thing has happened. Your level of consciousness has risen to a point where it's self-regulating how much and how little you can drink. And also your desire for more, which of course is what a, I guess, you know, one of the big, big games. So I, I think what you guys talked about there is extra, that, that breaks a, a bubble of a myth type of thing and brings fresh understanding to it. And uh, that's what we want. That's what we want. We want, we don't want to solve our problem. We want fresh understanding. Right there was, in my mind, for me, big, fresh understanding. I loved it. Thank you guys for teaching me that. Yeah. Well, the, the levels of consciousness thing, I, I think, really does play the biggest role in it. Because <clears throat> I, I believe that back when I, you know, used alcohol and drugs and food and everything to escape, I was at such a low level of consciousness that the the energy that came from getting drunk or high or whatever was actually a higher level. So for that time, for that evening or whatever, I, I would actually feel better. But inevitably, like Tanya said, you end up with that, that lower dip afterward where you actually go lower than where you were before. And there's that constant roller coaster, but you're always below contentment. You're always below any place of, of any kind of peace. And, you know, I, I, I experienced the same thing as you, Harry, but it's around like, like one and a half to two beers. Or I don't, I'm just done. I don't like that feeling of, of losing control anymore. And I, I, it kind of feels like it's that lower level of consciousness now. It's yeah, like I, exactly. I, I spend more of my time now at a higher level, so now it only pulls me down, whereas before it brought me up. All right. Well, so that makes sense. So a relapse really is just an indication that your level of consciousness has dropped. Because otherwise it wouldn't make you feel better. That's all. It's that simple. So just be gentle with yourself. That's all it was. It was a dip, and, and they're temporary. Everything is temporary, and that's a good thing. Even, even good things are temporary, which is, which is great, because when you let go of good, you leave room open for better. You know, if, if I would look at what used to make me happy even 10 years ago versus, you know, well, not makes me happy, but things I enjoy, would be a better way to put it you know things i enjoyed 10 years ago today i, I might look at them and go wow that's really just kind of stupid <laughs> you know it's just i don't enjoy a lot of that stuff anymore that's a big point i notice in our room people sometimes are complaining that they're getting they're getting happier and happier but life isn't isn't perfect and and yet they're they're growing and gaining in in, in wisdom and I mean, it's hard to imagine why anyone would complain about growing, you know, and say it's not enough. 
it, it, it is more than enough. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the only way to live. It's the only way to live. I mean, uh, if, if I, if I had my, my wishes, I, right now I couldn't change almost anything. Oh, I can, if I, unless I really wanted to make an effort, you know, type of thing. Like Mark could laugh more at my bad jokes, you know, but he doesn't. So that's the way it is, you know, yeah. but uh, anyway, that's just a stupid comment. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have that privilege. <laughs> How about you, Judy? You usually have a few words to say. I don't see me. I'm quite sick at the moment and can barely talk. So I probably <clears throat> won't today. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah. Well, one of the other things I'd like to bring up, this last one topic, you know, was great, was, uh, was that the other thing, so we have the idle time, and the other thing that I noticed that, of course, causes relapses was when life throws you a, a surprise knockout punch, and that, that I often often see really causes relapse. With guys, it's often around a woman. You know, I have a friend in, in prison. He was in prison and he, uh, um, he, he became infatuated with this, this lady and uh, it didn't work out and it just threw him for a big loop for, as an example. And it took him years and years and years sort of to get over it and regain his, his equilibrium. And um, so that seems to be the other heavy situation when life, being a, as Sid would say, a contact sport, throws us a little loop that, that catches us off guard. You know, in Mark and my experience of life, our, our hardest time was when, when we became divorced. I, I, I'm just speaking for you, Mark, but it was, it was murder on one level, and yet spiritually was the best thing that could have happened to me. It woke me up, to be honest. I was stuck in, in bullshit, lies to myself. I'd become dishonest, pretending, and, and, I, and all of a sudden, I lost my most precious possession. And it woke me up and said, something must be wrong with my thinking if this could happen like this type of thing. And, uh, and, and I actually, it actually spirit, emotionally and financially, a drag, but spiritually was absolutely the best thing that could have happened to me. And it, it woke me up. I mean it, guys. I would not be here without that divorce. Yet, I would not recommend divorce to anybody, to be honest. It's, uh, you lose a lot, but you gain spiritually what you need. And that seems to be a big part. How about you, Mark? How did you experience that? Just speaking for, as another divorce. Now who's, by the way, has a beautiful wife. I lo just love her, Karen. Just a ball of energy and uh, good ideas and positivity. Would you say, Mark, your wife is pretty positive? Yes, she's a beautiful person for sure. Yeah, yeah. And becoming uh, amazingly beautiful these days. Ah, okay. yeah. grow! Oh, yeah. I guess I guess she's seeing improvement in you. <laughs> it's the last thing that's seen. No, but uh, you know, I, I was thinking amongst the the big uh, things about that is the carrying of the regret over something uh, that's happened to you. Maybe a series of things that have happened to you, but regret carrying regret over time is a uh, maybe it's a learning thing. You just get tired of it after a while and that's, it's just what's coming to me and there comes a point when you say that's enough I really don't want to do that anymore tell that story anymore and it's just a story like you say and then I think that's a, maybe a sign and the quicker you can get to that point the better because uh, carrying regret for years is not a good thing it keeps you back it holds you back and it's really centered on you keeping you how you think you are uh, I think it's a sign that once you come to that point that you're open to something new and you're opening your heart, like you say, it's a spiritual journey. 
and uh, and then and then you open up to other uh, uh, fresh uh, experience and fre fresh feelings and things that can actually open. And it's not just gratitude; it's compassion, or it's all these things. Uh, re in reading Missing Link, you know, there's a, a variety of gateways. It's not just one way, and uh, positive you know, quiet, quietude in yourself, like Greg was talking about. And, uh, and lo and behold, you come up, come into a space where you're, before your personal thinking, you're deeper than your personal thinking, and you can't believe it. You can't believe this beautiful feeling that you've allowed to happen. And, and then you, you know, help other people, and you get more of that. Yeah. Anyway. It was great. No, no, you were dead on, man. That's fantastic. I loved it. Anyway, you know. Bob, you're a happily married man. What does that mean? Oh, it means a whole lot. It means I'm fortunate to have a wonderful person with me all the time that uh, I thoroughly enjoy and get to wake up in the morning and look over there and smile a big smile and go to bed at night and look over and have another big smile. We were just talking at my last uh, three principles discussion group and several of us were talking about since we've gotten this understanding how many more literally perfect days there are where you can look back on the whole day and just from beginning to end everything was perfect and uh, it just seems like that happens way, way more now than uh, it ever did before. And very few days now when it's not like that at this point. So it's just wonderful. My, uh, I never really was addicted to alcohol or drugs or anything. Uh, I was fortunate to have a mother that was a Christian scientist and those things were like horrible things from the devil and you know, anybody, you would never do anything like that. So <laughs> it kept me from, uh, you know, meeting a lot of people. I kind of became an extrovert as a result of it because everybody else was out there smoking and drinking and things. But uh, being kind of a nerd helped. But uh, Good to see you haven't changed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, at any rate, I guess... Any the closest I've come to an addiction probably is food, and I've had about three times in the past when I kind of reached a weight that I didn't particularly like, and then tried to lose weight and uh, was really dedicated, and you know had charts and counted calories and weighed myself every day, and I could look at the graph and see all the progress, and then I would get down to a certain point and say, well, okay, this is good. And then before I knew it, it, you know, I'd be back up to where I was. But it's uh, different. I'm doing it again now. and I've lost some weight. But I know this, time, this is the first time I've done it since having an understanding of the three principles. And I know this time it's just going to be completely different, and I'm going to lose what I want to lose and get there and, and not go back up again. And I just, I know that's the case because the things that used to appeal to me in the other cases, I think, gee, I'd really like to have a donut or something and, or this or that. And it's just, they don't even appeal to me anymore. It's, it's like, uh, again, your thinking changes and your life changes. So I'm not even concerned this time about, you know, going back up to where I was. I still have a ways to go, but. I have no doubt that I'll get there and, and it's going to be different this time. But I'm just totally enjoying life. It's wonderful. Beautiful. And getting to spend time with Greg, you know, is a, a wonderful thing too. Fortunately, he and I live in a, you know, just a few miles from each other. So we get together quite frequently and I agree with him on the uh, walking in the woods. Marty and I go out all the time on we're fortunate to have a lot of really wonderful parks here. And I'd have to say, Marty and I went to the uh, Three Principles Global Conference in Minneapolis, and we had gotten there and didn't know anybody there. And it was a beautiful day, and we went out walking in the woods, and who should we meet but Mark? 
and it was just such a, a beautiful, you know, he had such a kind, uh, I don't know, just a soft, beautiful nature that we just connected right away. And it was a tremendous uh, thing to experience that coming into that, that Three Principles Global Conference. And uh, Mark's one of my favorite people. It's, it's important for all of us to remember that energy that Mark was sharing and the feeling. That's for who we are. Every time we put out that beautiful feeling, it, it ripples, ripples out. And that's what Kim has noticed working with the poor, poor clientele. And what I've noticed working with the poor and underprivileged is, is, is it ripples out. And if you see the richness of the people that you're talking to, they feel the richness inside themselves. And that's the feeling that they understand. Everything else they don't understand. They understand the richness of who they are. And when they experience that, it's like a relief because they always knew and always do know that's who they are. And that other stuff, they're just a little confused about how do I shed some of this stuff. But that feeling... And then all the answers come to them. And what's even more important, the wisdom that they touch starts to teach you something very valuable that every human being in the universe is unbelievably wise, unbelievably beautiful. And they can lift me to higher levels. Even if I feel good and they start sharing, they, they go from zero and all of a sudden they're up here and you go, thank you. And you lift yourself up to where they are. So they're the ones who are lifting us, even though it appears that they are the ones who are needing help. And you put your hand on someone's shoulder, you might see a beautiful thing come back. You know, it's really a, a special, special feeling. I feel so lucky to be able to work with the people that I work with. I could not ask for better than what I'm getting right now in, in work. I just couldn't. It's just too beautiful. And thank goodness Sydney Banks uncovered the three principles so that we could share the little bit we do understand. And as Sid always said, a little bit is a lot. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on that. And it's, you know, I get this almost weekly reminder every time I come on and see Tanya's radiant smile on there. <laughs> she, she was so angry when I, when I first started talking to her. <laughs> serious, serious, eh? Yeah, life, life was so damn serious. Yeah, lighten up, lighten up. But she's the thing serious. is, you know, life is just way too important to take it seriously. <laughs> oh, Have some beautiful. fun. All right. That's my motto. All right. Well, this seems like a good place, Greg, unless there's a, somebody who would like to make a... How about you, Philip? You haven't said anything. I, I guess you figured I'd ask you sooner or later. <laughs> Maybe you could wrap it up a little bit. You're unmuted. Yeah, for, cheers, Harry. I like that last bit you were saying there. It was good. Uh, I've enjoyed the talk, actually. Yeah, and I've been reflecting on a lot of stuff as it's been going on. You know, because I'm from a recovery background, like... And I don't go as much anymore, like, just kind of lost. I kind of, I don't know. A lot of people, when I've witnessed them, because there's so much to cover that you've talked about. You know, it's like what I've noticed with people who are in recovery centers or jail or whatever, they're finding them place. It's when they come back into the real world, the struggle. An addict or an alcoholic loves recovery centers. And, and it's just, love, you know what I mean? It's just like, because there's no responsibilities in there. It's when they come back out to the real world, the struggle. Mm. You know, that's because it's responsibilities again, you know, and that's what I've noticed with people that relapse. They can't take responsibility. They can't handle it. You know, that's what happens. Or they lose interest in recovery. It bores them. They, get, they just get sick of it. They can't kind of toe the line as such because it's a lifestyle recovery, AA, and it's a lifestyle. And you've got to live it. And some people just lose interest in it, you know. But fortunately, I came across the principles, so I lost a bit of interest in it. <laughs> but I've got an understanding of this as well, you know. 
so this helped and yeah I just got more relaxed with it and that you know what I mean recovery bef- I don't know it was I mean I still go and all that you know but I don't go as much I used to go like phew, five meetings a week seven meetings a week for years you know what I mean and living that because it's, it's all about fellowship and service and it's the lifestyle you live you live the whole thing you know but I don't know it got a bit tiring <laughs> you know and life took over a bit but I find I'm just a bit more easier with it now a bit more relaxed with it now I don't and I've decided really because there was all the fear and the beliefs that went with it you know people who stop coming to meetings don't hear about what happens to people who stop coming to meetings and I just got that bored of it man I thought well, I'll just take the risk you know what I mean I just thought I'll just take the risk and get on with my life and it's not to say I've turned my back on it because I will go back but I've still got friends and that in there, you know. But I, to be honest with you, what I've found since I've stopped going to recovery, it's been quite lonely because that's been my life for the last seven years and I've kind of stepped away from it now. And when you step away from it, you lose the, you know, you lose the kind of friends as well. You know what I mean? Because they just think you're on a slippery path and it's goodbye. You know what I mean? Because they're so enriched in that belief system. Whereas I'm not now, you know, and I can't convince people of, Otherwise, it's up to themselves, you know, but I just don't live so rigidly by it anymore. I didn't find much freedom in it, to be honest with you. This freedom that was promised was just always just that little bit further away. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just always seemed that little, you know, and I always had that belief system of the 10-year mark. When I reach the 10-year mark, that's when it happens. I was fortunate I was talking to a free principles facilitator about that, and I, and that belief to me so she says do you believe that Phil I did at the time I really believed it I said well I do I believe after 10 years something and she says do you really believe that I said well yeah she says what if you can have it right now she says you know what I mean you don't have to wait 10 years she said as long as you've got that belief you'll have to wait 10 years and it helped me see through a lot of things you know and yeah that's what it's done for me you know and it helps me be okay not being okay I'm not always okay (laughs) You know what I mean? And I'm not, I'm not as fussed about it anymore. I don't get panicky. I don't start working on myself. I don't ring sponsors. I don't ring, you know, I'm okay not being okay now. I kind of embrace it. You know what I mean? And, and that, that kind of like, I don't act out as much because I just embrace it. If I'm not okay, I'm not okay. It's fine because that, that's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> kind of funny to talk about, but it's cool, man, you know? You're doing good. That's unbelievable. That's a beautiful sharing and so much dead on stuff. It's just incredible. Perfect. That's exactly what we're all experiencing. It's the same thing. I haven't been in AA, but it's still the same thing. Beautiful. Mm. Cool. I'll end it at that, Harry. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hello, everybody, Cheers anyway, by the way. Cheers to you, Guy. Fantastic sharing. Hey, I'll just tell you one thing. I was in... I was at a restaurant with Kim, like a few, well, not about a month ago, yeah. And there was a, a guy sat at the table. I hope Kim doesn't mind me sharing this. There was a guy sat at the table with us who wasn't, hadn't been to the principles thing or out, but he was just sat having a meal with us that night. And we, which we were talking principle stuff around the table. And this guy who was just there listening, just a bit curious. Well, after we'd had the meal, we, he walked outside. He was just alive. And like I said to Kim, I said, look at him. He's been hit by that. And all he's been doing is sat at that table for the last two hours. And you can see the difference in the guy. And all he was doing was listening with a bit of curiosity. It was, it was, a, it was an amazing thing, you know. It's a beautiful thing. And mm. it shows the strength. It's not those who are out there and talking. It's those who are feeling inside. That's the, you're, it's a personification of the truth. It's not what, how much you, you participate, it's what you feel inside. And one insight is worth a million words, a zillion words. And uh, I can say as a big talker, that's not where I found the answer. I found it in the feeling inside, like that guy. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Well. Thank you, everybody, for showing up again. This was great. Really enjoyed this. Um, next week, we're actually going to have Dr. Bob Solomon back on. And I can't remember what Harry said the, uh, the topic is, so I'll let Harry handle that part. Right. Bob and I are going to – I'm going to 
co-facilitate, not great courses facilitated too, but I, I'll, I'll be sort of like a guest facilitator with, with Bob. And we're gonna talk about the answer lies in the, in, in, in the chambers of the quiet mind, which is a favorite theme of Sid Banks. And uh, we're going to try from a psychiatric and uh, spiritual perspective, try and point to, to that answer because one of the things is, and this came out here in this show very well, by the way, the answer lies in a quiet feeling inside yourself. And we're just going to carry that on. And, and I like Bob because he, he's a psychiatrist, but he's spiritual as well. And that really impressed me. So I hope to see you guys next week. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all this incredible participation really remember all the people who are going to be watching the show after this is what they'll see and i personally love what everybody shared today it was uh, very very uh, heart rendering yeah this was great everybody have a wonderful week we'll see you next week <laughs>